Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media, just taking a look at the 2023 release of The Many Deaths of Lila Star, the deluxe hardcover release that is, from Ram V and Felipe Andraj. And what we usually do with this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across these books in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. Now, for those of you maybe visiting the channel again, literally a year ago, I actually did this book before the trade release. And I did rewatch the video, and I noticed I said something very interesting at the beginning. Yes, you guys already know how much I love hardcover, so whenever a trade comes out and I pick it up, that's usually a sign that I don't believe the publisher will come out with a hardcover, but I love the damn story. Like, so damn good. Well, sometimes it's nice to be wrong, you know? Uh, so I'm so happy that they finally released a hardcover for it. It's almost like, you know, you throw out the idea in the universe and it comes back. But it was almost always going to happen because this book was always something special to me. And it seems like a lot of other folks noticed it got nominated for awards. It's on like the book of the year top tens a lot. So it was more than perfect that this got the deluxe hardcover treatment. Now, it is relatively the same size as a, you know, DC Deluxe or Marvel Oversize hardcover. Um, you know, it is from Boom Studios, so it's very much akin to the Something is Killing the Children Deluxe release. But anywho, uh, you'll notice though what they do this time around is they make this book very much more um, Andrade-centric, meaning you're not really going to get much other artwork other than from... Andraj himself. That's what differs from this release compared to at least the trade. But you'll notice that it's not a dust jacket. It's hardbound. I always love when companies do that. I'll say that every time. A nice flat design on the spine. And, you know, it just carries on tradition with its accolades on the back here. Yeah, the Eisner nominee. Honestly, I legit thought I should have won. It was that special. Um, but anywho. In terms of uh, bonus material this time around, uh, surprisingly, not the variant covers from the trade, which is ironic because one of those covers was done by uh, Christian Ward, and that man and Ram V went on to do, uh, what's the word, Aquaman together. So I always found that interesting. However, what they did include was a very, very much appreciated set of, you know, very introspective interviews and, you know, plot points. So... Yes, in, interviews are afterwards from both creatives. Um, probably one of my favorite parts about it, yeah. Like, this is a very unique, by the way, the way they go about the interview process this time. Um, but probably one of my favorites is, uh, like, the favorite aspect of the book. Um, but, yeah, you're just seeing kind of, just different kind of plot points as to, you know, like, what topic or what kind of ground to cover, at least when you're looking at this very introspective look. Very on point, man. Every page, every everything about this book was great. Yeah, here it is. Everyone on their favorite sequence. It's funny how Ram V mentions, yeah, two of my favorites right off the bat. Uh, very on point. Uh, but yeah, just uh, some character profiles. It's a shame we never got to see this one in the actual book. But otherwise, yeah, just very on point. As I said, it's very Andrade centric. I've always loved this cover. If they didn't use the original cover, this would have been my favorite second overall. Uh, the Up in Smoke story. A lot of people remember that part of the book. Very on point. And pretty much a copy line for line from the trade bios here. But yeah, just an excellent little motif. Uh, I mentioned that about the first book, how the color motif of the exterior really does speak toward the actual content of the book because yeah like if you just flip through this book you'll kind of notice that the colors really just maintain themselves it's very familiar it has a very tonal kind of consistency to it i love that about it now i guess since we're at the beginning here for art and plot points uh for those of you who may not have watched the first video or maybe never came across this book um essentially it just focuses on the three hindu gods predominantly yama the goddess of death, or god of death. Um, the boss of the gods, or the creationist god, Rama. And the one, the, the god who's kind of responsible for breathing, you know, the spirit into beings, uh, Prana. Who becomes the, the reason for the many deaths of Lila Star. But anywho, 
As mentioned uh, in the previous video, essentially the story just boils down to this. The goddess of death, she gets called into the office of the gods and is given her walking papers. Because apparently somebody's going to be creating the key to immortality. So with a lot less death out there, death is more manageable. Maybe we don't need you so much anymore there, Yama. So I always love this. I mentioned this before, but I always love the, you know, the paranoia of having to become human that the character exhibits. And I just love how, like, you know, they're grabbing whatever they believe is going to help them in the afterlife. But um, anywho, when she's brought down to Earth, literally, uh, outside of getting a piece of humble pie, she inhabits the body of a recently deceased young woman, Lila Starr, hence the name. And yes, uh, throughout the series, she's basically always coming into contact with the person who's going to create immortality from when he's a young man, even a young baby here, as you see, uh, Darius, as his name is. But uh, I mentioned this also before that the running shtick of the book is that at the end of every issue, she somehow finds a way to end up dead on some random thing. So she just was brought back to life. She runs right out the street. She gets hit by a bus immediately. And you kind of see this idea where, yes, the here enters Prana, who always tends to bring her back to life to bring on the next issue. And I've mentioned this where each issue, or any time she comes back, she doesn't come back right away. Time progresses in Darius's life, the person who will create immortality. And every issue acts as a parable toward, you know, the ruminations or the ponderings of life and death, or even what you consider your basis of faith. So I've, I've always found that very on point. And the way he chose to go about it with Andraj, uh, Ramvi I'm referring to, the way he goes about, like, just trying to bring up these small little parables and simple things, like this character, uh, forgive me, I, I forget his name, is uh, Baran, or Barnan? Um, yeah, this, to Darius, he was like his everything. He was just a servant next door who used to do all the family, you know, home uh, housework and all that. Uh, but even to this young child, like, he meant so much to him. To Darius, he was his god, right? But uh, that's just the way I took it, or at least the way I took it, the... Uh, you know, extra, sorry, existential kind of view upon it. But yeah, just this very strong profile art, very strong establishing shots. Everything was taken with excellent care. And even just the way, yeah, even to Darius himself, the way the dialogue is presented, the way things are understood. For instance, she's wondering what's going on. Instead of him just directly saying it, she sees it so she understands. Brilliant storytelling. That's a Ram V right there. Uh, just overall on point um probably the part of the book that a lot of people tend to focus on though is the the party when darius is in his university years uh the whole hedonistic lifestyle but a lot of people tend to resonate this issue i guess because it speaks to them at least the reader base um but yeah you know she just gets in on it's a very hedonistic lifestyle smoke it up drink it up whatever um but yeah it also kind of juxtaposes against you know, Darius's love life, how he's taking things way too serious as a young man. As I said, like almost everybody can take something from this story and kind of relate it to themselves. But again, just a very strong art overall. Uh, you know, just the uh, riots in Mumbai as it's trying to depict here, very on point. It is told in a present tense uh, prose, but still. Uh, oh yeah, I always found that interesting. She always continues to smoke even after certain events of the book. Um, read it and you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, probably a, a story I didn't really focus on too much was uh, this issue where, um, you know, Darius is now an adult or whatever, but this doesn't really deal with him so much. It's just more so about Lila just realizing the importance of faith to people and how there's this give and take, there's this syn synergy, there's this symbiosis where, yes, the gods, as much as they feel that they may be superior, they're nothing without their believers. So I always like this story about this empty temple that only one person visits and how it keeps both parties alive. And then you realize which aspect is more important. Um, take it for what you will, but at least you read it several times, you really get a lot of meaning out of it every time. Uh, yes, the very jaded adult version of, of uh, Darius here. Always appreciate this. And I love how clever he is. I like how self-aware this story is. It doesn't treat the reader as a fool. 
Because, yeah, this moment was one of my favorites. That he, he acknowledges certain things. Just very on point overall. Uh, but, man, uh, I've said it before. The cathartic moment of this book, it's beyond reproach. It's beyond perfect. I'm not trying to be snobby. It's just when you read this, you can't help but like start think, start more thinking inwardly, more, not selfishly, but more in an introspective sense. Like, what does religion mean to you? What does, you know, life mean for you? What do you expect to get out of it? Kind of aspect. Um, just an overall epic story. Um, no heavy action. That's not the point here. That's, this is just storytelling done in this medium in such a fantastic fashion. Man, um, I, I kind of hinted at it already. The fact that I already have the trade, this is a 10 out of 10, probably an 11 out of 10 if I had to really, really gauge it. But just an all-round perfect book. Um, I almost feel like it kind of got robbed, in my personal opinion, Ram V, both as well, uh, Fipe. I both wish you guys could have gotten your accolades. Um, but you know what? I'm, more and more people are starting to find this book, and I think that should be accolades enough, right? But uh, anywho, it's no longer about me at this point. Um, you know, maybe you guys are going to come across this book, maybe heard about it, have your own thoughts. I wouldn't mind hearing them down below, as always. And of course, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Y'all folks, take care.